Hello and welcome everyone to Loki tutorial, let's get right into it. First off let's start by giving a little background about Loki for those that are not very familiar with this robot. Loki is associated with the Ragnarok squad and came out along with Fenrir and Tyr. Like the previous two its ability is called Shapeshift. Loki can basically switch from one mode to another at any time. Recon mode is when Loki cannot use any of its weapons but disappears from enemy radars. It also has a top speed of 80 km per hour in this state. In assault mode Loki gets out of its stealth, gets minus 30 km per hour speed reduction but is able to use its 3 light weapons. It has the freedom to stay in any of these modes for as much as it wants. There is a catch with its ability though that you need to keep in mind. After switching to assault mode there is a 5 second time window where you won't be able to switch back to recon mode. This gives enemies the opportunity to kill Loki quickly if the commander is not very careful. Be conscious about the purpose and the goal for piloting a Loki. Your ultimate mission is capturing beacons and not getting into fist fights with big boys like Aujuns, Ares, etc. So stay in recon mode for as much as you can to fulfill your mission. However, there will be times when you will have to switch to assault mode. Here are some situations for you. When you can take out an important target without giving up too much of your HP. When you want to take out a beacon but an enemy with lower or similar firepower to yours is staying on, on it preventing you from turning it blue. When you need to sacrifice a big part of your bot or all of it in order to protect a very crucial beacon. You can have an unlimited amount of stealth that's true but don't get too excited because you can become an easy prey if you're not very careful. Robots that have their weapons in the same level of height with your robot's hitbox can hit you very well even when you are stealthed. Examples here are Blitz, Invader, Spectre etc. Avoid being too close to these robots. Also any other robot that uses quantum radar on you can manage to kill your Loki fast or cause major damage to it. Be careful of robots like Ares and Aochun because they tend to use quantum radar quite a lot. Other things that you need to watch out for are Mercuries and Hellburners. Their abilities won't care about the stealth of Loki. Try avoiding when you see them in a battle. Always aim for beacons that are unprotected otherwise you will have to deal with their guardians. You might have to get in combat with them which may result in your victory but also it may not. So take the safest bet and go for the beacons that you feel like are easiest to capture. Usually both teams try to push for the beacons that are in the center of the map. So these areas will be the most crowded and biggest fights will kick off there. Most of the times it is not the best idea to push for those beacons. Instead be bold and aim for enemy home beacon or beacons. This is actually a very useful combat strategy used by our ancestors as well. Attack where the enemy will expect you the least. Loki is a very fun robot no doubt. If you pilot it really well it can survive for very long. But is that exactly what your team needs? You should be the judge for answering this question because it really depends. If you feel like you are still doing a great job with your Loki even though you stayed for too long on it just keep going. If you realize that you would be more helpful by ditching the Loki 
and spawning a damage dealing bot to give a helping hand for your teammates, then don't hesitate. The thing with the Loki is that you are really doing a great job at capping beacons, but on the other hand you leave 5 of your teammates to fight 6 enemies. As I said, look around you to see if your teammates would really benefit from your help. This is an important one to get most out of your Loki. Weapon choice should always be automatic reload weapons like shotguns, either Gust or Halo or even both of them. The reason for that is simple, shotguns will always keep reloading, even when you switch to no weapon mode. If you were to use something like Spark for example, you will have to empty your clip before going to recon mode. If you don't, you simply won't be able to trigger the reload. Thus, your weapons will be half empty for the next encounter. Another suggestion in weapon choice category is having at least one halo on your Loki. To keep it short, lockdown is very important in today's meta and it's a key factor into defeating your enemies. Even if your opponents are using anti-control module, you will be able to trigger the reload of it. Number 1 on the list is Anti-Control. This is more crucial than last stand for Loki. When you are going for a beacon, you really don't want to get locked down. Anti-Control will prevent that from happening. Next on the list is last stand, then heavy armor module. These two will significantly boost the time you can survive in the battlefield. But if you are like me who doesn't possess enough resources to acquire these top-notch modules, Go for 3 basic armor modules and upgrade them. They are very cheap and will give you a 15% durability boost for your Loki when you max out 3 of them. It is also worth mentioning that in test server we tested a module called Accelerator which basically gives a speed boost to your robot. By the time this video is published, this module is not yet in live server. If you're watching this tutorial on a later date when Accelerator is released, then definitely purchase it for your Loki. It would be my top pick after the anti-control. As for the active module, choose phase shift. Utilize it when someone uses quantum radar on you. There are four major skills that Loki really benefits from. Mechanic skill which at max state repairs 0.5% of your maximum durability each second. Armor expert which gives a huge bonus of 15% more durability. Roadhog which increases your overall speed by 6.5% and Edmund Roadhog. In case enemy team controls 3 or more beacons, your Loki will become 20% faster. This skill makes a huge difference. That's pretty much it guys, hope you enjoyed this tutorial, drop a like if you find at least one useful thing in this video and don't forget to subscribe for content like this. Check out my Patreon link below to support this channel. Take care and I'll see you next time.
I'm not afraid of